Now what we've seen with the counters at this stage is that each flip-flop, whether it's a D-type or a JK flip-flop, will indicate a specific bit in a sequence. So the first flip-flop we label 0 because it changes after every 2 to the power 0 pulses, which means every one pulse it will flip or toggle. The second one is number 1, so every 2 to the 1 pulses, so after every second pulse it will change. We can see that from the truth tables that we draw, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then this one is double zero, double one, and then the third one will be four zeros, two to the power two, and then four ones, and then the third one will be eight zeros and eight ones. So every time it's just two to the power, or the yeah, two to the power of the number of which that flip flop is. Now we've also seen that once a flip-flop has gone through its 0 and 1 cycles it just goes on and repeats itself with every toggle signal or toggle instruction that it receives. So when we want to develop a timer or a counter that counts up to a specific value we need to incorporate a logic test in order to determine whether that state has been achieved yet. We do that with two logic gates. The first logic gate is a NAND. The NAND gate sees or connects to my flip-flops onto Q and not Q in order to see have we reached the predetermined value that we should have. The NAND connects onto an AND gate which connects to your clock impulse. So when this NAND does not have the correct sequence connected to it, it will present a 1 on the output. That 1 on the output will feed into this AND and then every time a clock pulse enters a 1 will be sent from there into the clock pulse or the clock input of my flip-flop. Whether it's synchronous or asynchronous is irrespective but that AND needs to feed into the clock input. Now once we've established at what value we want to trigger. Let's say we want to trigger at 1, 0, 0, 1. That is the values of the Qs that needs to go into this or at which it needs to stop. So that's the values of the Qs. But now remember this is a NAND gate and it will only trigger off on the output once it reads all the inputs as a I. So in this scenario we're going to connect this NAND to this Q to this flip-flops not Q which will give us a 1 there and the same there and then again this one's Q output. That'll give us four NAND or four ones on this AND which gives us a logic 1 which is inverted to a logic 0 which in turn will disable the clock input from continuing. Whenever I have a self-stopping timer I need to, or a self-stopping counter, I need to activate the reset option on these ICs or these flip-flops as well. So let's say we want to connect our output or we want this counter to stop at 1, 0, 0, 1. This one is going to connect to my Q output. This one is also going to connect to my Q output. 
but these two as they are zeros they need to connect to the not q which in this case is going to be ones so that one's going to go to not q over there and that one is going to connect to not q over there as a result this counter will now deactivate the clock pulses from entering the flip-flop when I have a 1001 configuration on the input.